Hey everyone, this is Ben with the INTJ YouTube channel and IDRlabs.com, formerly known as CelebrityTypes.com, made this response video to one of my initial videos. So here is my reply to them. First, they say they don't know my name, but that I seem to be from Arizona, so they call me Arizona INTJ. I clearly said my name was Ben at the beginning of that video, and I'm from the Southeast, not Arizona. Next, they admit that the empirical evidence for the functions is non-existent, and that the empirical evidence for the dichotomies is weak and problematic, so I appreciate their honesty on that point. Here's why you won't find any evidence for the Jungian functions. It's pseudoscience and religion. Jung's concept of individuation and reconciliation of opposites is nothing more than repackaged Gnosticism and Eastern mysticism. An article on psychologytoday.com points out the Hinduism and the MBTI. Jung based the four functions on the four elements concept, which has long been debunked by real science, yet maintains popularity in occult rituals and Eastern religions. For example, in Buddhism, the four elements are a basis for understanding that leads one to the unbinding of Rupa, which leads to Nirvana. IDR Labs knows this, and they even have a video on achieving liberation from the cognitive functions. Next, I had pointed out in my video how MBTI has changed the orientation of the tertiary function, and they responded saying that because typologists have identified a mistake and converged on a new axiom, therefore there must be truth to the functions. This is wrong. Many people today still can't agree on the orientation of the functions. And in fact, people within the MBTI and Jungian community can hardly agree on anything at all. Some people maintain that the functions don't matter at all and that it's all about the dichotomies. Others say that only the functions matter and that the dichotomies are meaningless. Some say we use four functions and some say we use all eight. MBTI says the type doesn't change. Yet Jungians such as Steve Myers, no relation to the Myers-Briggs people, criticizes MBTI for missing Jung's original concept of individuation. And some say there may even be more than 16 types. Furthermore, Jung couldn't even figure out his own type. He seems to think he's ISTP at one point, then INTP. IDRlabs.com has an article titled Young Myers, Kersey, etc. on Young's type in which they list the type that experts have suggested for Young and these people cannot agree on his temperament, much less his type. What does that say about this theory? So there's not a convergence on a new axiom, but rather a divergence on almost every aspect of this theory, which, according to your logic, invalidates the theory. IDR Labs has repeatedly attempted to debunk anyone who even remotely criticizes MBTI. They also imply many times in their video that I don't seem to understand things like platonic theory, ulterior logic, and that perhaps I was too narcissistic to fully understand this theory. So let's see if IDR Labs knows what they are talking about when it comes to typology. Using the Wayback Machine, I compared their types from earlier dates to the present date. Margaret Thatcher was an ENTJ in 2012, but now she's an ESTJ in 2018. Ronald Reagan was an ENFJ in 2012, but now he's an ESFP in 2018. Sigmund Freud, they have an ENTJ in 2012, but now he's an ISTJ in 2018. And finally, they had Stephen Colbert pegged as an ENTP in 2015, until, of course, he had a certified MBTI practitioner administer the MBTI on his show, and he tested as an INFP, which is, again, a totally different temperament, totally different type, totally different cognitive functions. You have proven your incompetence in typing people time and time again, which Jung himself referred to as a, quote, childish parlor game. And speaking of narcissism, here's the thing with IDR Labs. If you're an INTJ, they basically think you're a narcissist. On their profile page, they say that INTJs are, quote, strongly linked to the narcissistic personality. They have an article saying that Newton was an INTJ and narcissist. They even wrote a book on Amazon.com titled INTJ and the Narcissistic Personality Style. Okay, guys, we get it. You think INTJs are basically narcissists. Sadly, many of the people who follow my channel came from pretty rough backgrounds. Some of them were abused either emotionally, physically, or sexually. Some of them have struggled with things like isolation, social anxiety disorder, and many of them want to be more social but just really struggle with that. Some of them even have things like Asperger's 
disorders or autism. If anyone is to blame for it, narcissism, it's the people who promote typology, which promises that understanding self will help you in some way. Next, they admit that typology can poison people's perception, but maintain that it doesn't poison everyone's perception. And I would say that Jungian typology corrupts everyone in at least two ways. Number one, it, it corrupts people intellectually by promoting pseudoscience. And number two, it corrupts people spiritually by teaching paganism and Gnosticism. They go on to claim that Philemon the demon was actually one of the first Christians instructed by Paul and that he's considered a symbol that God can always be near to us or something like that. Nice try guys, but Philemon the demon has nothing to do with Philemon in the Bible. In the Bible, Philemon was a church leader whose bond servant Onesimus ran away and he has nothing to do with young spear guy. Young claimed that Philemon represented a force that was distinct from his own psyche and he gave Young his greatest insights. Contrary to what some people claim, this spirit could not have merely been a hallucination in Young's mind for two reasons. Number one, other people witnessed these events. Freud, who was an atheist, witnessed Young's paranormal activity and even fainted. Young's own family also witnessed these paranormal events and he himself maintained that it was in fact a supernatural event. Number two, these spirits taught Young information that people all over the world, when they take psychedelics, when they engage in meditations and so forth, they will contact these ascended masters, these spirits, and they teach them the same phrases, the same things over and over. In addition, Young later said that Philemon was such a powerful spirit that he mentored, quote, Buddha, Bonnie, Jesus Christ, and Muhammad. And just to invalidate their point further, Philemon isn't even his real name. He appears to Carl Jung under multiple names. First, it's Elijah, then Philemon, an Alexandrian Gnostic, Basilides, another Gnostic, and then finally reveals his true identity, which I'll tell you at the end of this video. What's worse is that IDR Labs actually attempts to pass Carl Jung off as a Christian, and literally everyone on the planet knows this guy is no Bible-believing Christian. I mean, he's alleged to carry on affairs his whole life. He practices throughout his whole life every form of sorcery and occultism, and they still teach that at the C.G. Young Institutes today. He blasphemes God left and right, says he wants to transform Christ back into the soothsaying God of the vine. Carl Jung was not a Christian, but rather he was an apostate and deceiver who would sometimes outwardly profess to be a Christian, but in reality, he was attempting to destroy Christianity by mixing it with psychologized forms of Gnosticism and paganism, which, mind you, his spirit guide Philemon instructed him to do. If you go to Google and type this phrase right here, you should be able to find an article or a book excerpt with one of the recorded conversations between Young and Philemon the demon. And just look at how he's playing Carl Young for a fool. He's telling him what to do to abandon Christianity, that he has what it takes to teach and all this. And rather than saying that Carl Young can considered himself a Christian, I think it would be far more accurate to say that Carl Jung considered himself Christ. He had a deification experience during which one of his demons announced that he was Christ. He would write things like, I must become a Christ, and that you should all become Christ. Jesus warned us about people like Jung when he said, take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Next, they claim that I can't speak on behalf of all Christians by saying that experiencing Philemon as a spirit guide is necessarily unchristian. You guys have got to be kidding me. Of course this is unchristian. The Bible roundly condemns the use of familiar spirits and the Old Testament sanctioned the death penalty for such an act. The Bible says, quote, Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The Bible also tells us, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Let's put Philemon to the test. He addressed Carl Jung as Christ, check. He told Jung to abandon Christianity and proclaim the new false religion, check. He told Jung the highest God's name was Abraxas, which is Satan, Lucifer, in the Gnostic traditions, check. I'm pretty sure he's a demon. And people keep saying to me, Ben, just because Carl Jung channeled demons, it doesn't mean his theory is invalid. Of course not. 
Carl Jung's theory is invalid because it lacks empirical evidence for the functions and fails to meet other scientific criteria. It has been ripped to shreds by scientists and psychologists alike. It is based on pseudoscience and occult concepts. Jung couldn't determine his own type. Typology experts can't agree on Jung's type. IDRlabs.com has failed time and time again to accurately identify a person's temperament, much less their type. And that's what invalidates Jung's theory. The demon stuff just shows you where this comes from and that Jung has an agenda. Next, they claim that I overstate the connection between Philemon and the theory of psychological types. Wrong. The theory of psychological types is undeniably linked with Philemon, as you say yourself, John Beeb has pointed out. Reflecting back on the demonic episode that produced the seven sermons to the dead, Jung wrote that, quote, my entire life consisted in elaborating what had burst forth from that moment. Everything later was merely the outer classification, the scientific elaboration, and the integration into life. But the numinous beginning, which contained everything, was then. In fact, the title of Jung's book was Psychological Types or The Psychology of Individuation. And again, the demons reference the concept of individuation in the Seven Sermons to the Dead. The book probably should have been titled Psychological Types or the seductive whispers of Philemon. So again, his whole life's work is about these demonic encounters and he consistently would turn to Philemon, the I Ching, his mandala, and everything else to try to get answers and try to validate what the demons originally taught him. For their final point, they claim the Bible has four gospels because there are four temperaments with each gospel presenting Jesus as a certain temperament type. Let me just point out the obvious here. The fact that the 16 Myers-Briggs types can neatly fit into the four temperament model which has long been debunked by science should be the dead giveaway that we're dealing with pseudoscience and not science. And it doesn't matter to me if you can find 100 million Christians who claim that there are four gospels because there are four temperaments. The Bible itself never makes such a claim and in fact condemns astrology which is based on the four elements. The Bible itself tells us why some of the gospels were written. The Gospel of John says, quote, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Luke's gospel was written to a person to provide, quote, an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. Matthew included genealogies and rituals, not to present Jesus as an SJ type, but to prove to his Hebrew audience that Jesus had in fact come through the lineage of David and fulfilled the messianic prophecies. Mark focused more on Christ's suffering service. To say that we have four gospels because there are four temperaments is just as foolish as saying there were 12 disciples because there are 12 personality types in astrology or that there are nine fruits of the spirit because there are nine Enneagram types. In an attempt to prove their claim, IDR Labs references Irenaeus, an early church leader, claiming he was laying out a framework for the four temperaments in one of his arguments against heresies, which YouTuber Sarpedon did a great job of refuting already. But the irony is that when they put forth this argument, they actually inadvertently made a huge blunder. Here's why. As I said before, Philemon actually appeared to Young under many different names, and for all we know, these could have been different demons, but then finally revealed his true identity in Young's Red Book as none other than Simon Magus also known as Simon the Sorcerer. It says, quote, but there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. The Bible goes on to say that Philip was preaching and people were getting saved and that, quote, then Simon himself believed also and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wandered beholding the miracles and signs which were done. The Bible continues, And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness, and in the bond of iniquity. So Simon professed to be a Christian with the hopes of accessing the power of God for his own selfish gain, but he was never really saved. Now the Bible never tells us definitively what happened to Simon Magus, but fortunately the early church leaders had very much to say about Mr. Simon Magus. Irenaeus, the early church leader who IDR Labs claimed promoted the 
four temperaments model wrote quote i should bring to light the valentinian doctrines showing that they spring from simon the father of all heretics another early church leader named justin martyr also condemned simon magus pointing out that he claimed to be God. So you have all these early Christians who had to fight against Gnostic corruption because the Gnostics were corrupting manuscripts, they were leading people astray, they were teaching all these exciting esoteric philosophies saying that you could become God or you could become Christ if you just find out that hidden spark of divinity by finding the Gnosis, the hidden knowledge, and all this sort of nonsense. And when all these early Christians go back to investigate where this all came from, they all point the finger at Simon Magus. And then 1900 years later, who do you have? Carl Jung. And what is he doing? He's teaching the same sort of esoteric philosophies. He's passing them off as psychology and science. And he's channeling a demon to learn this information. And the same demon that Simon Magus was channeling now appears to Jung under the names of Elijah Philemon, and then finally Simon Magus. Thus, IDR Labs has proven my point that Jungian typology and its derivatives is not only pseudoscience to the extreme, but is actually blatantly anti-Christ and should be eradicated from any and all Christian organizations. And just notice the similarities between Simon Magus and Carl Jung. Both profess Christ outwardly while inwardly rejecting the fundamentals of the faith, desiring to really destroy it. Both lusted after spiritual experiences and power. Both claimed to be Christ or God. Both used extensive sorcery methods to contact spirits and gain insights. Both used the tactic of syncretism to blend paganism with Christianity. Christianity, and both started entire movements and had dedicated followers. Someone had asked IDR Labs in the comment of their original video why they took the time to respond to a channel like mine which only had about 10,000 subscribers. IDR Labs responded, someone was wrong on the internet. Yeah, and that someone was you.